wearing this hat backwards. I always, every time I see a guy wearing a baseball hat backwards, I'm like, why are you wearing a baseball hat backwards? I only think that it means that the man is losing his hair and he's trying to cover it up somehow. Because why bother having a hat on? And one guy I dated, he had a convertible. He's like, my hair gets messed up, and it would flap. I'm like, okay, I'll grant you that one. And John's like, my hair is messy. I want to have it. But he never wears it backwards. But I just thought I'd try this this way because it would block all the light out of my face. So I thought I'd try this. I won't do this again. But never I look like no. a little tomboy never like that. Never say no. Never say never. I can't believe it. Anyway, I was going to read to you a couple of poems that I've never read from this book to you guys. From the book, Every Event of the Year. Volume 1, January through June. Yes, Volume 2 will be out by this summer of July through December. Yay! It's like 286 pages. It's big. And I haven't read. I've been writing like mad. I was writing every day in 2019. And I'm like, I'm not going to read these. I'm not going to read these. So that the first time I share them, they will be from this book. So I got a bunch of new stuff, but I don't get to share them yet. But I was looking for things that were related to this time of year that I have not shared with you guys. Um, one of them was just a week ago. Last Tuesday was, I think, Fat Tuesday. I have one about Lent in here. But um, Shrove Tuesday is actually Mardi Gras. And I have a piece in here called The One at Mardi Gras. So this is... One at Mardi Gras. I was at Mardi Gras last weekend, and I got a bunch of beads from parades. No, I didn't lift my shirt for them. And a friend of mine had a balcony on Bourbon Street, and so we were on it on Friday night. And there were swarms of people stretched over a mile. It was a mob. No one could walk, and the crowd just kind of carried them all along. And all the men expected women to get naked for them for beads. And from my balcony, I would see a few every few minutes a series of flash pops, coupled with a roar from the crowd. And I knew that a woman lifted her shirt for the screaming masses. I refused, however, to strip for drunk strangers when I knew they expected it from me, being on a balcony and all. So men would look up at me and stretch out their arms, looking up inquisitively as if to ask either for me to give them beads or for me to strip. And since I wasn't stripping and had plenty of my own beads, I decided to turn the tables and see if these men would accept the same conditions they asked of these women. As they would look up at me for something, I would say, Drop your pants! <laughs> they would look up at me, confused, because the women are the ones that are supposed to be doing the stripping. But in general, I got two responses from the men. Either they would look at me as if I was crazy and walk away, or they would just shrug their shoulders as if to say, okay, and then they would start to unzipping their pants. And then they'd make a gesture to turn around as if to ask, do you want to see my butt? <laughs> and, I, and then I just went and yell, the front! And then they'd drop their pants, they'd, they'd turn back around, they'd drop their pants to their, to their underwears, to their knees, and then they'd start moving their hips, which I never asked for, by the way. So over the course of the evening, I managed to get at least 20 men to strip like this for me and I was amazed that there was a society this microcosm of society that allowed this kind of debauchery in the streets a sort of prostitution for plastic beads form of capitalism so I was reveling in this bizarre annual ritual when this one man Irish everyone else wearing gray and minding his own business decided to look up at me so I asked him to drop his pants and instead of disgustedly leaving or willingly obliging, he just crossed his arms in front of his chest and looked up at me as if to say, You want me to do what? You naughty, naughty girl. <laughs> and he smiled and looked up at me. And then it occurred to me that I'd finally found someone in this massive crowd of, of, who, that thinks the way that I do. And now, New Orleans has a population, from what I hear, of about one million. But during Mardi Gras, they have like nine or ten million people there. And all I could think was that of all of these people here, I finally found someone who wouldn't blindly do as I asked, but at the same time, didn't think I was crazy for asking. Of course, as I looked at him, I also happened to think that he was stunning. By far the best looking man I'd ever seen there that entire night. He looked like he had style. He looked like he was self-confident. 
But then again, I'm nearsighted, and I was on a balcony drunk at Mardi Gras. <laughs> so we had an impasse when he wouldn't strip, and neither would I. So his attention would have wandered, and it eventually was diverted to other balconies. But I noticed for the next half hour that he never left from under my balcony. And every once in a while, he would still turn around and look up at me. Oh, boy. Well, I was thinking the entire night, I know this is no way to start a relationship. I mean, I don't even know if this guy lives anywhere near me, and I haven't even had a real conversation with him. But he must be just near perfect. And all this time, we were just screaming and partying at Bernie Gras, and he would still occasionally turn around and look up at me and, and see if I was still there. And then finally, he looked up at me, signaling that he had to move with his friends. And so I held up my index finger to make him wait, and then I threw a bunch of beads at him. Uh, part of me threw them because he was good sport, putting up with my taunting and not giving in. But a part of me threw them because, because I saw in him that strong sense of values and that strong, strong sense of self-worth, that sheer love of life, that desire to be alive that I possessed all along and been always longing to see in someone else. The one I'm wearing. <laughs> is another one. It was written on March 8th, and it was on International Women's Day. I have no idea how this is going to go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is called Equality for Women. <laughs> I have seen women treated as second-class citizens on the other side of the planet because their religion says women should cover everything except their eyes which is probably based on the lurid, uncontrollably sadistic sexual tendencies of the males in that species. Uh, I was in Luxembourg on, on the only warm day in my first European trip, so I wore shorts and didn't know that I'd be seen as a whore because I wore shorts. Apparently I missed the t customs training. I, I can't help but think that men can wear shorts, but apparently women cannot. Now, in the USA, a study shows college men say on record that they're against rape, but that three-fourths of them intended on getting women drunk enough to not fight back to have sex. I know the law, boys, and that is rape. It's just that you don't want to say you're okay with treating women as nothing. These may be the same fraternity men who rape a woman and leave them for dead in the dirt while she's in a hospital. Others press charges against this man, and after a preponderance of evidence, a judge then lets the man off with three years probation and an expunged record. It's really amazing now to see such equality for women. I could start listing details about how across all industries and across all states in America, women make less money than men, how it's even worse for women who aren't white. A quarter of women are raped or sexually abused, and a fourth of all married women live with the regular domestic abuse. But really, who wants to hear more numbers like that? This should be a, a feel-good piece about equality for all women. This should be a glowing commendation for women with power, like Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany, reigning supreme as the most powerful woman in the world for the past eight years. Women are CEOs of GM, YouTube, even Fidelity Investments. Think of the power of female celebrities like Oprah Winfrey. And I don't care if you have an issue with Angelina Jolie, but she's a NATO goodwill ambassador to assist refugees. I could list uh, the most pro ph ph philanthropic, excuse me, I could list the most philanthropic women, but some of them are only ph so philanthropic because of their husband's what, money. I, I could talk about more women now holding political offices in the United States, but if men are reigning, if men reigning supreme in politics won't understand what women want, well, maybe more women would. Or maybe I could talk about the fact that the first female astronauts through, the, through, through only today are now, be, are now the people that are reporting the first all-female spacewalks. That was the first all-female spacewalk. That's so cool. <laughs> 
<laughs> sorry, interjected, sorry. <laughs> I know Americans landed man on the moon 50 years ago, but it took American women another 15 years to join the space race. Wait a minute, this was supposed to be all about the whole equality thing, so it's just so easy to get sidetracked when you look at all this uphill battles that we've had to climb to gain any real respect. Because, yes, decades to centuries ago, women had it so much worse. We had to fight for the right to vote. I mean, the U.S. Constitution had to be amended to allow it because we women needed proof that our rights couldn't be taken away from us. And even recently, we women have had to literally take the bull by the horns to prove that we can fight in, with the big boys, not only in combat in the military, but also in the workplace and at home. So women, keep up the good fight like throughout history, from Nefertiti to Cleopatra, Joan of Arc, to scientists like Marie Curie. We all have this ability to grow above and beyond what men expect. So whether or not all the men agree with us women, know that all women are equal to men. I believe in women, and more importantly, all women must remember that they are equal to it's second nature for us to keep fighting for the good fight. So I know that all women are behind you because you are worth it. And it's perfect that uh, Tom is coming up because he's going to be reading next. And I am pulling up this little poem because it made me think of what Tom has said recently. What did I say? What did I say? Well, you'll find out. I will find out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have been, because somebody suggested it, writing Twitter-like poems for every element in the periodic table. And I had to do another one for strontium because I read a scientific article about it last night. And I haven't been writing every day, but it was exciting to write a couple things on February 29th. Because how often do you get to say, exactly. this was written on February 29th. So this one is exactly the number of characters for a Twitter link poem. And it's called Strontium Shows, Shorting Your Skin. An electron is as elusive as Schrodinger's cat. Until we detect it, we can't know where it is. See a strontium ion missing electrons. Remaining electrons wonder which orbit to take. A high one? A low one? A smear of both? In one millionth of a second, it shows the quantum leap. One millionth of a second. That's how long it takes. And you think about it then after the first off of it to see what happens because like Schrodinger's cat we can't see an electron when they look at an atom it's a blob or a blur under a microscope you, you we don't see it we can just infer and guess and so they're able to figure out trying to get that transition because it's got a missing electron so which one do I go in do I go in this orbit do I go in this one or do I just quantum leap and and simultaneously exist and vibrate in both of them or what happens and they were using the strontium element to be able to figure this out and take photos and this this is the crazy so science stuff. It, they, they were able to show, well, that's a thing. You don't know what it was doing the instant beforehand because like Schrodinger's cat, it's in a box. You don't know if this cat is dead or alive until you actually look and observe and see whether it's dead or alive in this box. That's, that's the thing with Schrodinger's cat. And you don't know where the electron is until you actually look at it. And they were actually able to do and see what would happen to an electron before it would actually be make that quantum leap to stay in a position. And once it's in that position, it's in that position. But scientifically, they cannot speak to what happens to that electron beforehand, which is the crazy thing about this. And it was a strontium element, that, uh, the ion that they were using. That was it. And because you're the between worlds poet, because it's like, which which layer are you in? Like the electron. And it, yeah, exactly. Which is why, which is why I said, which is it a higher orbit, is it a lower one, or is it a smear of both? Right, I want to believe both. It and and we still don't know, and they right. were able to just capture it like right after that quantum leap, and it, it made its fixed spot right. in an orbit. 
And that was what that thing was about. And it was just cool that they used a strong team. Anywho, and, and I had to bring up cats. And speaking of cats.